So surely with Seth Rollins' major knee injury and the fact that he had to surrender the WWE World Heavyweight Championship, a lot of you are sad, but at the same point in time, you're also kind of hopeful and optimistic. Well, do you want to admit it to yourself or not? Because you view this as an opportunity, something to shake shit up a little bit, potentially exciting. You've got Survivor Series. You're going to get a new WWE World Heavyweight Champion while all the while Seth Rollins doesn't have to put anybody over. It's a chance for the WWE to perhaps hit the reset button, perhaps reset the tone heading into 2016 and Royal Rumble and what is going to be a critically important WrestleMania 32 show. So now we get to that standpoint, you've got this tournament going on and you know it's about everybody trying to figure out who's going to be the next WWE World Heavyweight Champion and more importantly for many people who should be the next WWE World Heavyweight Champion. Now, I've got my own thoughts on it. Well, let's take a look at some of the top names, if you will, and in terms of people that should or should not. Now, to be fair, I haven't really paid attention to raw results the past couple of weeks, so if I name off anybody that has already been eliminated, uh, then please feel free to poon me in the comments section below. But here are some of the noteworthy ones. Now, from what I understand, the Money in the Bank winner, Sheamus, was in the tournament and immediately lost. Which would beg the question of why he would have even been in the tournament to crown a new champion when he's already got a guaranteed title shot to begin with. It's something that makes very little sense. Very little sense whatsoever. Unless you were packaging it and building up to it to where, hey, if he doesn't get option A, he's still got option B to give him the WWE WHC. That could potentially work, but of course we don't get that type of storyline, continuity, or consistency, or attention to detail whatsoever. We just throw him into the tournament, even though he's already got a guaranteed freaking shot at the title, and then we just immediately have him lose. Yeah, you know, my whole thing was, is if you were going to go with Sheamus, then why not just use this as the opportunity to have him do it? You know, yeah, Seth Rollins hurt, up, hurt his knee up or some shit, you could have figured out something to do with Sheamus to have him cash in, and at the same point in time, you set up for a huge Seth Rollins babyface return to the mid-card sometime in the middle of the late portion of 2016, and all the while, you perhaps get some much-needed heat on a guy in Sheamus that people would rather chant at him for looking stupid than actually caring to boo what he's doing out of him being an actual heel. They just, he kind of almost has that quasi-X-Pac, get the fuck off of my TV, get the hell out of the ring heat. You know, Sheamus should have been a legit option here, but of course he's not because pretty much everything the WWE does is stupid. Which, of course, brings us to Roman Reigns and the inevitable feeling of doom and gloom that is surely engulfing and engrossing many of the hardcore fan base because they think that this is the time, this is the moment where Roman Reigns is going to win the WWE World Heavyweight Championship and he's going to go on to some record-setting run, perhaps longer than CM Punk's 434 days. A lot of people will say, Roman Reigns isn't ready. He's just a looks guy. He's just a muscle guy. What the hell does he do in the ring? You know, he's not good on the mic. And they'll say all of these things, and probably a lot of them true. But let's, let's just call it as we see it here for a moment. Roman Reigns, in the purest sense of the form, when we look at the moves of Doom Scale has more moves than Dean Ambrose. Sorry, you might love Dean motherfucking Ambrose, but you know it's true. Ambrose will run around, he'll do that stupid little thing through the ropes to come back off and clothesline somebody, and then you've got that, what is it, the Future Shock DDT, whatever the fuck it's called, and that's about it. At least Roman Reigns is diesel-like. He gives you five moves, six with the hair flip. I'm just saying. In terms of from a microphone standpoint, no, he's not particularly good. Frankly, are there that many people that are actually that good in the WWE any damn ways? Was Seth Rollins really that enthralling and engrossing on the microphone that he would actually draw you into what he was doing and based off of the strength of his promos make you want to pay money to see him or see him get beat? I don't think so. In the grand scheme of things, when you look at the WWE landscape compared to the days of the past where you're talking about how champions are built up and properly built up. Roman Reigns is as properly built up as anybody at this point in time. And at least you know with Roman Reigns, 
that if the company does put the belt on them, they're really going to believe in them because they're going to insist upon it, and whether you like it or not, they're going to keep them there. With that said, though, I think it's kind of a crappy way to have Reigns win the title. It's an inevitability. It's going to happen at some point in time, and I'm fine with that. But I don't think Survivor Series is the way to go. I do think you have a bad imbalance between heels and baby faces on the card. Furthermore, on top of that, I don't think the story is right. I don't think the timing is right. I mean, unless you did like Roman Reigns and Dean Ambrose in the final two of a tournament, and you know one of them turned on the other, then that could maybe work. But again, you want to have somebody like a Roman Reigns win, it needs to be at a WrestleMania or at the worst SummerSlam. It shouldn't come at a second rate of the big four pay-per-views, if you will. I just don't like the timing for this because there's no real payoff to him winning. At least if he would have won at WrestleMania 31, even if a lot of people didn't want to get behind him, even if a lot of people don't like him, at least he would have beaten Brock Lesnar. At least he would have beaten the guy who the previous year ended The Undertaker's undefeated streak at WrestleMania. There would have been some type of sense of payoff, especially based off of how that match positively actually turned out between the two of them. There would have been some payoff. I just don't see where there's a whole lot of payoff just having Reigns steamroll through everybody and winning the belt as a babyface in Survivor Series. Absolutely none. This is a situation to be the guy is as good as anybody in terms of who you could put it on. Sorry, you don't like it. Fuck you, because it's true. But the opportunity isn't right. The timing isn't right. The situation is absolutely terrible. So I hope they're smart enough to not go there. Dean Ambrose? I'm sure a lot of you would be like the... You know, can't get Rollins, don't have Daniel Bryan, don't have CM Punk, so give me Dean Ambrose and I'll be happy. It's clear the company doesn't believe in him that much. They're not really behind him that much. And, you know, honestly, I kind of feel like Ambrose as a character is kind of stagnated, and I feel like from a in-ring standpoint, which is what so many of you value so much more than anything else, now, frankly, the dude, if he's not doing just insanely crazy Terry funk light type of shit, he's pretty boring to watch. I don't think he's an incredibly good storyteller, and I most certainly at this point in time wouldn't entrust the company to him as the champion. That's for goddamn sure. Just like, frankly, at this point, I don't know if Reigns is ready either, but, you know, it's, again, what do you got? You know, how the fuck is Dean Ambrose so much better? Because he wrestled on the indies and you think he's better on the mic, okay? And what? I mean, and again, do we want another Seth Rollins type of title reign, a mid-card World Heavyweight Championship feeling title reign, similar to a Daniel Bryan title reign, similar to a CM Punk 434-day title reign? The answer is no. You know, not only do the fans have to buy it, not only do the fans have to believe it, but whether you want to admit it or not, the WWE has to buy it, the WWE has to believe it. And they just don't with the guy. I wish somebody like a Ryback would get a run, I know it's there, I could sense it, I could feel it, but it ain't happening. You would think if this company was really that big on dudes that are swole and Vince still had that much of a hard on for him, Ryback would be a multiple time world champion by now. But of course, as is always the case, this company screws the pooch and they make the wrong decisions and they don't do nearly enough with Ryback and as a result, he ain't doing shit, period. Some of you will point to Kevin Owens, and you'll be like, you know, here's a guy that can talk, here's a guy that can get behind in the ring, and this and that. Do we really buy a Kevin Owens as a world champion at this point in time for the WWE? Is he really going to be a guy that's going to interest so many people that he's going to be worth putting the belt on potentially to WrestleMania? Now, if you sat there and said Kevin Owens was going to be the guy that maybe carried it to the Royal Rumble, and that helped set the stage for WrestleMania 32 in the title match there, which, frankly, at this moment in time, doesn't look like it's going to particularly matter that much in the grand scheme of things, because so many other things could be happening on the show that the belt doesn't matter. You know, I just, I don't see where the hook is. I don't see where you go with Kevin Owens as a world champion, so I think him winning it, too, is a crappy idea, similar to Reigns at this time, similar to Ambrose, similar to a Ryback, similar to even a Sheamus, where you maybe could still have Sheamus cash in at the end of Survivor Series and still be end up being the guy. I kind of think the timing is lame there, too. Now, I could throw out names like, well, you could always go down the Brock Lesnar route, but again, he's not in the tournament, so why the hell would you want to put him in there? You know, would it work? I guess it depends on your perspective. You could have Undertaker. I mean, he's around, but he's too busy wasting his time with Bray Wyatt. And some of you might have said, well, Bray Wyatt, you know, just like Undertaker, just like Brock Lesnar. You know, no Bray Wyatt in a tournament, whatever the case might be. Yeah. I mean, 
even if he was, you really want Bray Wyatt boring the brakes off of you as a world champion? I mean, who is there really right now that is an interesting and compelling character? I mean, shit, if the company really wanted to shock the world and they really wanted to get behind somebody new and something that would feel different, the obvious choice to me would be Big E. That ain't happening, and we know that. It would fix your problem of the perception that is the reality of the racism of the WWE combined with the fact it would instantly create a new star. On top of that, it would give you something completely different that you frankly have never ever seen in the WWE before, and that is an unequivocal, undeniable fact. So that's exactly why the fuck this company won't do it. To me, there's only one option, really, for who, if you had somebody actually win the title as a Survivor Series, I'd, have done, I'd do Triple H. You know, let's, let's, let's be realistic here. When you talk about what type of storyline sense does that make, well, what the fuck does it matter anyways? It's not like this company is giving you compelling, interesting storytelling with multiple layers and in intricacies and a lot of attention to detail and everything else. So if none of this other shit makes sense, at least have it make somewhat of sense. You know, John Cena is probably going to be gone. You know, he's not in the tournament. You're not going to go right back to him. You know, you could use him later on. Look at Triple H. You know, Cena's at 15, Triple H is at 13. You know, he's the guy in charge, so to speak. He's the guy with all the advantages. He wants to be the one to surpass Ric Flair. He's tired of John Cena having more world titles than him. Imagine how much people would believe in that instantly, how much credibility there would be, because a lot of people think it legitimately so that Mr. Schnoz has a huge ego, because he does. I call him God for a reason. If there was ever a time for God to grace us with his presence, it would be at Survivor Series walking out of that show with a fucking title. Because then, at least you've addressed the problem of the heel-face balance. At least you've got somebody that might be believable as a world champion. You could always go to a Triple H as a world champion. And you know with him as a world champion, it's going to piss a lot of people off. So people would actually want to get behind somebody like a Roman Reigns or whatever the fuck case might be, a babyface coming up. Even, oh God, a John Cena at a Royal Rumble. Coming back and beating him for the fucking title. I mean, you could layer the rock into this shit. And you could have him help uh, Roman Reigns beat Triple H. Or you could sit there and intertwine the Rock. If you want to go Rock Triple H at WrestleMania 32, then fucking do that for the title. Or if you don't, have Cena come back and win it at the fucking Rumble and sit there and fucking have the Rock fucking interfere to help Cena beat Triple H. At this point in time, to me, the best option that they have is the option that they hardly use. I mean, look at the WWE now. They are so bad and so stupid on so many different levels that they poorly utilize God, the same guy that they pounded down your throats incessantly, time after time, month after month, year after year, for a decade and a fucking half. They can't even use him and his big titted wife, who's the daughter of the fucking founder and CEO, right? Well, here's a chance you could have one of those McMahon, Helmsley, two people power trips all fucking over again. Remember how good the story was for a lot of you with Daniel Bryan trying to pursue Triple H? Even winning the belt, frankly, became secondary because you really believed in him and Triple H and the issue that was going on and the story that it was telling at WrestleMania 30. You could do the similar thing with Triple H. They need Triple H to work more than he is, and that's the truth. And the best way for me to get him out of the quasi-retirement of only wrestling WrestleMania maybe one other match a year is to offer him the fucking strap and force him to take it. They gotta be better than any of these other fucking options. Kevin, Kevin Owens, Roman Reigns, Dean Ambrose, Ryback, whoever the fuck else. Like I said, unless it was Big E, there's not a single goddamn good option in that fucking tournament to win that title at Survivor Series. Have Sheamus fucking cash in and then have him hand it over to Triple H. You want shit that people can believe in? Hashtag Breakfast Club rules, bitches. You can set up to a fantastic six-man fucking six-pack challenge at WrestleMania 32. It could be Triple H defending his title against John Cena, Randy Orton, Sheamus. Batista comes back. Batista. And then Shawn Michaels. Shawn Michaels and Triple H are so goddamn good together that at WrestleMania 20, they wrestled in a triple threat for the World Heavyweight Championship when it was only the two of them, and Triple H managed to drop the strap to absolutely nobody. 
a six-pack challenge at WrestleMania 32 featuring the Practice Club. Now that, ladies and gentlemen, will put plenty of asses in the fucking seat. But in all seriousness, outside of that fantasy, that would just be incredible. Oh, God, could you imagine? Woo! Incredible stuff. I think Triple H is actually a good short-term option right now, all bullshit aside. I think I really think, honestly, in terms of the entire roster right now, he's the best option that they have. They're not going to go there. They've really pigeonholed themselves into a way where they can't go there, I don't think. Uh, but that's where they should go. I think that's where they have to go. But, of course, they won't. To me, though, who should really be the World Heavyweight Champion after Survivor Series? The answer to me is nobody. Yes, Seth Rollins had to vacate the title due to injury. But when you look at the schedule over the next couple of months... You have Survivor Series. You can get away with the Survivor Series not having to defend the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. And if anything, if anything, it's probably better that it doesn't. You put more of the emphasis on what Survivor Series used to be. What fans grew up loving it for. Because it was entirely different than any other show on the card. It was all about tag team matches, about big battles, inter interfacing this and that and everything else. You didn't need the title to be defended or fought for at Survivor Series. So why go there? TLC, same fucking thing. As long as you can come up with a couple of decent personal issues and the fact that you've got um, all these different stipulations that you can go with at TLC, why the fuck do you have to have that world title defended there? You could sit there and maybe... If you want to sit there and say, well, we need to have some type of feature match for the main event. If you want to do John Cena's return match against ADR in a TLC match for the U.S. title at freaking TLC, that's good enough to main event for that show. Because it's going to be about the stipulations anyways. Is anybody really going to give a fuck? In my opinion, the best way would have been to do nothing about this for the time being and let it fester and let it sit out there. And you could actually have used this for a couple of months of Raw and created automatic qualifying matches for the Royal Rumble. Instead of giving yourself just a couple of weeks of television that could potentially matter heading into Survivor Series, imagine two plus months of television that would really matter heading into the Royal Rumble, where you could copy the format of 92 and have 30 men, or if you wanted to get crazy, 40 men, it won't fucking matter, and have the prize be the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. It's something we haven't seen in over two decades. And you could create multiple months of significant and meaningful television because you're building everything up to the Royal Rumble to build up to what is going to be perhaps a historically important show for you and a significant show for you in WrestleMania 32. That's how I would have done it if you asked me. Before they even started this tournament and everything else, I'd say flat out, don't even fucking bother having a freaking tournament. That Survivor Series that culminates in crowning a new champion. No, you start a slow process. You do it maybe where you sit there and say you've got, you know, 15 spots where people can qualify. And the other 15, if you are a former world champion, you automatically get in. Because you could sit there and use that as a logical stepping point to bring in all types of fucking big names at the Royal Rumble. There's where a Triple H can come into play. There's where The Rock can fucking come into play. That's where, if you want to get really froggy, a Stone Cold Steve Austin can come into play. An Undertaker, a Brock Lesnar. And we talk about the 92 Royal Rumble, beyond question, the greatest Rumble match of all time, and one of our favorite Rumble shows ever. Imagine the 2016 Royal Rumble, where again the title is at fucking stake, and you have no clue whatsoever who the fuck is winning the thing. You could sit there and point to a Roman Reigns, or a Kevin Owens, or a Dean Ambrose, until it's blowing out your whole reign. But you don't know. And wouldn't that be nice to have a couple of months of significant, meaningful television that's all building to this one crescendo at the Royal Rumble, which is just the beginning of building to the crescendo of WrestleMania 32. That Royal Rumble match, that one match right there, would set the entire table for WrestleMania 32. You wouldn't even need to do any fucking thing else either. You just have to sit there and just kind of tread water for two months, and you draw 110,000 people into AT&T Stadium next year. So as far as I'm concerned, if they're not going down the God route, and they're not about to go down the Big E route, then don't have a champion at all. Save that shit to the Royal Rumble next year. 